The Gifted Season 1, Episode 2 Thoughts. This episode is called RX, the common abbreviation for medical prescriptions. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. Everything live action X-Men. And, uh, let's see, yeah, um, episodes, yeah, the show's TV 14, rated TV 14, and so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we start one year ago, which sets up a couple of things for later. You know, that's where we meet Reese's mother, and we see some of the, you know, Lauren dealing with the, um, what's the word? Yeah, the, the casual, what is the word? The, the, the casual bigotry of the environment, you know, yeah, people in general and also her father. Which, you know, the last time we see Reed in the, near the end of the episode, you know, Jace offers him, you know, if you give us the mutant underground, you'll get a lawyer. You know, is he, how reformed is he? Is he still, you know, yeah, so very nicely done there. <laughs> and we get some more of the sibling rivalry, you know, which I appreciate. They, they couldn't have had quite as much in this episode as they did in the in the first, because there's so many other episodes and storylines. Not a complaint. But but yeah, the you know, Andy is like trying to you know, messing with her with the you know, theme song and beatboxing, and then when she doesn't quite get a strike, he's like trying to gloat and she turns her back and, and like just you know, behind her back uses her and, you know, to, to, yeah, to use her powers to knock over the last pin, you know, very, yeah. It's, it's a very credible dynamic. It feels very real. And, and yeah, you know, the, the, um, this other, you know, this other young mutant is, you know, She's just trying to bowl. She's not bothering anyone. But because of her appearance, you know, these jerks keep bullying her. And eventually she temporarily loses loses control of her powers, I would say. You know, she didn't seem to be meaning to, to go quite as far as she did, at, at least. And, and Reed just tells the father, you know, this is a serious crime. You know, walk away and he doesn't do more to, to help them. You know, he could, you know, try to get them representation or something, you know. Yeah, but, you know, we and we get the detail that it is a serious crime to cause property damage if you're, you know, with mutant powers, even if it's by accident. You know, it's, um, I will admit, it was, I, I didn't always realize this, but in more recent years, you know, this episode is from 2017. I think that was, yeah, you know, a lot of people here on the far left were talking about, you know, when conservatives, when when f the far right is is trying to demonize someone, yeah, conservatives in general, they they often seem to value property over the lives of minorities. You know, she didn't actually hurt anyone. But it's a serious crime, and it's a serious crime because she is a mutant, which reminds me, there was this case where a trans person was arrested, you know, f basically for calling the police. Um, let's see, the... Um, Let's see, there was, um, hmm, okay, now I'm, I'm struggling to find it, but I know there was at least one case where, oh, I think this might be, uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, um, 
So it was it was in Texas, which yeah, not a not a huge surprise there. Joan Simoncelli, an intersex two spirit transgender woman, uh, let's see, yeah, arrested at her home near uh, near San Antonio, Texas, in October after officers claimed she had made a false police report about a transphobic harassment incident. So, you know, yeah, it's it's, it's completely absurd. The the. Um, and, and, you know, let's see, it was, yeah, um, Simoncelli was reportedly harassed with transphobic slurs by her nephew while she was outside of her property. Simoncelli's nephew punched a car window, which led her to call the police. You know, that's extremely threatening. That's, yeah, the, but, but she was the one who was arrested because they didn't believe her because she was not cis. And so, so you know, extremely relevant of the show to, to do this again. And let's see. Yeah, and, and we see, you know, Blink is basically, you know, yeah, she basically passes out because she used her power more than ever before. The way I see it, it's basically like if you try to run a marathon without training a lot for it. You know, it's a it's a muscle. So yeah, she she way overextended her muscle. The muscle she uses to open and close portals. And let's see. Yeah, and we see that, you know, Lorna Dane has this um mutant collar that you know yeah knocks out her her powers although she is later able to use it slightly more I guess maybe it's I, I if I had to guess I would say maybe it is the collar is not quite as powerful as you know it's maybe perceived by some to be and it's maybe about, you know, like psychological, like if you, you know, she wasn't trying to use her power, there was less passion in her using her powers very early in the episode than later. And, you know, yeah, if it's, it's one of those things where like if you, if you take a, a tiny little step towards something and then you get hurt, you're less willing to take a leap, even though that might actually be, you know, yeah, you know, imagine you're you're standing in front of something that's, you know, extremely hot. If you if you take a step, you might step into the hot thing, burn yourself. But if you leap, you might make it all the way across the the burning thing, you know, something like that. And there's a lot of stuff in law enforcement where it is psychological more than that they can actually do the thing that they're threatening with. And, yeah, the, the rules of the prison are made clearer to Lorna, very, very intense. And, and yeah, you know, um, Kate is, is shocked to find out you know what? You you don't have good health care. You know she never thought about this. Yeah, and and that's again. There, there's a lot of people who are denied proper health care because of minority status. You know, again, a lot of trans people are denied. You know, like yeah. So again, very re relevant. And. Um, um yeah yeah and and you know Kate does you know make it clear like literally if they don't treat Clarice she could die and yeah very very it's it's very nicely done this thing of you know basically like Clarice like her body is is like reacting very in intensely like the the you know yeah she's she's it's um yeah and and the 
yeah, her her instinct is I have to get away. You know, the it's it's um it's a, it's somewhat like a reflex almost. You know, and so she's opening portals. You know, that's yeah the um. I forget what it's called, but the um, there is this thing of like if you're in a um, um yeah there there are situations in real life where someone will react based on instinct even if logically they know this is not gonna help it might even hurt and and very very tense when you know. Yeah, she opens a, a portal very early in the episode, not not trying to, and you know when it closes, it chops off off a piece of a car, which then slides past, and everyone has to like duck out of the way. Very nicely done, because that is a major, you know, it's essentially the biggest, the 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 biggest danger that anyone faces throughout the episode. Lorna is also in a, a lot of danger, but is probably, you know, Clarice herself and the people near her, you know, because of these portals, because of her overextending her powers. So, yeah, this sets up, you know, yeah, look how dangerous that was, and that was one portal, and by the end of the episode, there's like a dozen or more. And, yeah, Lauren manages to close the portal but it is also clear she's not going to be able to keep doing this forever she's buying them some time and yeah some really good scenes between Jace Turner and Reed Strucker you know and it is an, it's a neat sort of reversal you know normally Reed is on the other side of these kinds of situations and it's again one of these things of you know some people need to actually see you know yeah they need to ha actually have the the roles reversed in order to you know it's a, it's a classic d device you know there's all those there there are several different cultures that as far as i understand independently thought up stories where is it called? I feel like it's called the Prince and the Pauper, and yeah, a prince and a pauper swap places, and these are stories told in order to increase empathy. So it's basically that that we're seeing here, and yeah, I quite like Marcos in the car pointing out Kate's Kate and Reed's hypocrisy. You know, it's it's now that they're own children, you know, they were fine with Reed putting away other people's children, you know, everyone, you know, until cloning is, is, and you know, until we start cloning human beings, we all have parents. And, you know, every teenager that Reed has put away was someone's, yeah, someone's kid. And yeah, Lorna. They they go full like women in prison. I think is the subgenre. I don't know from you know. I do not have personal experience, but I am aware that there is a subgenre called women in prison of of exploitation films, and they tend to feature shower scenes. And yeah, we have that detail about you know if you if you can't pass if you're a mutant that can't pass you know, that can create problems for you, even if you're not, like, trying to do something wrong, you might be forced into doing something. And that, again, you know, really applies to trans people. There's a lot of people who abuse trans... There's a lot of cis people who abuse trans people for, you know, yeah, them not passing, passing for cis. And the the um yeah a, a lot of trans people are are kicked out of their home when it's yeah when they they either come out or are outed and yeah you know of course some of them end up having to to do something that is technically illegal because they don't have any other options 
I like Andy's line about soda. You know, this is something, you know, do you think mutants drink soda? <laughs> and, and yeah, you know, Lauren points out, we are mutants, and he's like, still trying to wrap my head around that, you know, just, like, the, the earlier the same day that he found out he was a mutant, he was using slurs against mutants. And that's also a thing. There are a number of people who later come out, but for a while they are homophobic or transphobic. You know, there's for, for some of them it's that they deep down feel like they might be LGBTQ+, but they, there's a lot, it's, it's, yeah, it's internalized homophobia and transphobia because there is so much pressure to, to not be, yeah, a, a member of that community. And, yeah, Marcos points out, you know, the, the um, mutants, if, um, Let's see, well, he says something like, we have the ultimate pre-existing condition. Which, yeah, you know, the... the um, yeah, it, that, is, that is what it would be like if a certain percentage of the population had these, you know, superpowers. I don't know enough to say if it's if it's a very direct thing for yeah I, I I'm afraid I don't um, yeah and and you know she points out we're gonna need without an emergency we're not getting you know getting in there fast enough you know, you said you have a wound, you know, show me, and, and, you know, she's, and, and he's like, okay, just don't, don't freak out about the blood, and she's like, I've seen blood, you haven't seen my blood, which, yeah, you know, in the first episode, we also saw, because, yeah, you know, he's got this, this light-based power that, you know, he can use, yeah, to, to, like, in, intensely enough, he can cut, cut through, like, cinder blocks and such, yeah, it's it's straight up in his blood, or his, actually is his blood. So, yeah, it's extremely hot and and glowing. I I don't I'm not sure I mentioned in the first episode. So far, the 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 effects are quite good. There's a little bit where they push it slightly further than they can actually make you know seamless, but. Yeah, and, and nice creative use of, of powers. I like when Lauren is closing a portal with her, you know, force field manipulation powers. It's very clever because, you know, evidently, it, it's not always quite like that, but certainly here, the teleportation portals is that you're ripping a hole, you know, yeah, I guess in the in the space between two places, basically. So, yeah, if it's just ripping a hole, logically, you can close that hole even if you're not normally manipulating portals. And, but, but yeah, very, very clever with the, you know, they, they go in, Marcos and, and Kate go in, <clears throat> and, you know, they're, they're like, oh, he's, you know, he's bleeding, we have to get, you know, help, and, and, <laughs> I feel bad for this, you know, uh, do they call him receptionist or, you know, because she's technically just doing her job, like, you gotta sign in, you know, and, and Marcos is like, this is gonna take too long, and, and also be, you know, basically either they have to use fake names, or they're gonna leave a paper trail, so that's, you know, yeah, not a, a great situation, so he, you know, he takes his hand off the, the wound, and puts it directly on the on the table, and he's like screaming, and the you know the table is like starting to you know parts of it are like melting or, or burning or something like that, and and yeah, that obviously makes it clear. Okay, fine, forget signing in. You know, go go now. And yeah, the the wound gets shut with staples. Yikes. And the doctor assumes domestic violence, which, you know, 
by itself it is you know it, it is a, a good thing to try to you know Kate show shows up and she's got like a um, you know yeah clearly she's got a um, you know what's the word injury you know the and and yeah when when a couple come in and and one of them has an injury there's a, a reason you know it, there's a certain logic in, in suspecting maybe it's domestic violence but he has to go and make it, you know, he says, you know, some of these mutants, I don't know, they're, they're dangerous. And let's see. Yeah, and back with, with Reed and Jace, you know, Jace t says that one of the charges, that was also, you know, very nice, you know, technically, we haven't, you're, you're just being detained. We haven't charged you with anything yet, but... You want a lawyer? You got to bring up some charges, and I just, I, part of me wishes he would be like, oh, I'm sorry, did did you not? Oh, you know what? Never mind. I don't need a lawyer. I don't want to be charged with anything. But but yeah, Jace comes back and he says terrorism, and the the, yeah, you know, it's it's very clear. He's taking these bits and pieces and trying to create a narrative. Which again, you know, very common if law enforcement has someone that they really want to, to, you know, maybe they want information out of them, maybe they just need the caller, want the caller. Yeah, they're gonna try to, you know, yeah, create and craft a narrative that makes it seem like, oh, this is a very dangerous individual. So, yeah, that's and and yeah, we get the you know why Jace said. The, the in, in episode one he says the thing about you know when it's your own when when it's apparent it's different some, something like that you know and and yeah he says you know his kid died and he doesn't care if the mutant that killed his his kid was a good mutant or a bad mutant which reminded me a lot of like you know that's essentially that's that's very similar, at least, to some some of the stuff when we talk about being in favor of gun control. The, you know, good guy with a gun, bad guy with a gun. And that, you know, that's how conservatives like to, to try to frame it. Either way, you know, both end up... T t yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of the people who are shot in America are, you know, they're... they're Hold on. It's been a while since I looked at the stat, so I just want to try to get my wording right. It's something about um, it's um, it's it's something of okay I'm I'm struggling to find the exact but there's something about that like if you have a gun for self-defense in your home there is a, a higher chance that you'll accidentally shoot someone that you you know that it, that poses no threat to you then for you to actually use it to stop an intruder so yeah, I think that's what, and, and, you know, the first X-Men movie also had the, you know, Senator Kelly drew a comparison between gun control and, you know, limiting mutant civil rights. Let's see. So, you know, it, it feels to me like Jace does actually feel this, you know, this is what he believes, but the fact that one mutant hurt, you know, hit, killed his kid does not mean that all mutants are bad, you know, it's, and, and that's, again, that's something, you know, sometimes when people, when, when it gets really close to them personally, yeah, they, they, they overreact like this, you know, some, some of the biggest transphobes, you know, have experienced something negative. I uh, let's see. I want to say it was J.K. Rowling. You know, Queen of the Turfs. 
has uh, you know experienced sexual assault and instead of saying you know we need to to do more to to stop you know instead of focusing purely on the cis men that carry out sexual assault and it is overwhelmingly it is your your the the percentages you know it's a much higher percentage of cis men are you know guilty of carrying out sexual violence than trans people and yeah you know instead she you know she's you know she keeps saying that trans women are you know trying to, to yeah they're trying to gain access to to women's bathrooms so that they can sexually assault you know and it has been pointed out by by many if a cis man is going to sexually assault a woman he's not gonna care if the sign says women only now uh, let's see um Yeah, uh, very clever when the um, Kate, you know, the the she has she knows enough to to fake work that that she's working there. So you know she reads the the names off and then she steps in and you know uses the you know Stacy, Doctor, was it Doctor Campbell? You know, wants. You know, I, f I forget the name, but she also mentions a patient for for radiology or something like that. And Stacy's like, seriously, and Kate's like, I know, right? You know, and very nicely done because yeah, Stacy is not gonna be like, I haven't seen you before. She's gonna be like, oh, you're new here, fine. I, you know, we're too busy. Like, she's not gonna double, triple check every single new face she sees, you know, like, in her mind is probably like, oh, great, another one quit, okay, thank goodness we have a replacement already, you know, let's, let's go, and, and, yeah, everything that Kate said technically made sense, you know, she, she knew, because, because, like, the fact that she knows Stacy's name implies, oh, you know, I, you know, she was sent to go talk to Stacy by someone, who already knows that she works there and and yeah pass along this message you know so yeah very nicely done and yeah um the doctor uh, you know called the cops is talking to them and you know thankfully Kate and and Marcos do manage to to get away nice tense little scene the the you know yeah they're they're running the cops are right there the you know, they go through the, the laundry room and knock over this, like, container that has, you know, yeah, among other things, a lot of water. And, and yeah, that is, you know, of course they're going to slip. And, of course, there is that thing because that's, yeah, that's part of the laundry process. Very nicely done. Always a fan of when a piece of fiction can work in, you know, an environmental detail and they also you know Marcos uses his, his power on the the lock to make it you know extremely hot the old home alone and yeah very tense when Lorna is being confronted by the various cons and the one who you know, most seems to have it out for her, is actually in, in the, on IMDb, named, yeah, the character is apparently called Scar. And, yeah, you know, Lorna, this is not the first time that she's been confronted by a tough individual. And she, yeah, she points out, you know, <laughs> this, out there you have power, in here I have power. I guess you're glad that we met in here then. And the, yeah, you know, the reason that Scar hates mutants is the fact that a mutant, you know, yeah, gave her those scars. And 
Let's see. Right, and also, uh, I am not 100% sure what the character is named, but there was, um, let's see. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing a face or a name on the, oh, uh, uh, Porcelain Mutant, I think it might be, yeah, you know, amazing makeup, holy crap, just, yeah, completely convincing, like, that's, that's, it, it, It's one of the things where, like, for that, you really got to be careful not to push it too far. You know, I do love a lot of things in the Blade TV show. I know I'm the one, but one thing is there's there's this scene where a character of a vampire has been badly burnt, and you can kind of tell, you know, they just they they put something on top of her actual skin and made it look like that thing was. Yeah, made it look like that was burnt when, like, no, but the burn should, like, it, there should be, like, less of it, but instead it, it's, you know, yeah. And I think there was at least once where they, they even, the, the way it's filmed, you can actually see where where the makeup ends and, and her actual skin begins to, oh, so really glad that this did not, that that was not the case here. And, and yeah, you know, the porcelain mutant, yeah, you know, she points out, you really think you're the first person, you're the first mutant to think, oh, you know, if only I could get the call, you know, obviously that's, we all think that at first, and it never works out, you know, it's, it's very clear that she, you know, porcelain mutant has been here for a minute, and this is not, yeah, she probably went through that same frustration and humiliation of, of trying to use her powers and yeah and yeah really intense when you know yeah it actually escalates to you know scar and and some of the other cons attacking her and also you know like if the audience if we the viewer did not already despise scar when she says I heard you're pregnant, let's see what the kid, how, how tough the kid is, and specifically kicks her in the stomach, like, okay, yeah, uh, Lorna, do what you gotta do, please, this is just, what a monster, you know, and, yeah, you know, she manages to use her power, she picks up a table and smacks, you know, yeah, Scar ends up, like, on this, on this fence, you know, talk about being on the fence about something yeah that was and and of course you know Lorna is the one who's punished even though she didn't start it and she wasn't the person who kicked a pregnant girl in the stomach you know if any like they should be giving her a medal and yeah um back with Re Reed why do I keep almost calling him Reese Reed He's not Mr. Fantastic. I don't know what. Yeah. Um, oh, right, right. And before that, yeah. The you know they're working on evacuating the. I'm afraid I I did not pick up, but the the yeah where they're where they have Blink because it's just too dangerous. You know it's and and yeah by the end of the episode, very nicely done on you know yeah like portals everywhere and every so often you know something. To, like goes through a portal and and just yeah it's clearly extremely dangerous to be there now and yeah the, uh, back with Reed Ellen is brought in and and questioned and you know Reed calls Jace out says this is harassment this is not you know and yeah and and apparently in 1984 she marched for apartheid you know she she seems to not worry especially about mutants but you know she was like but they you know it wasn't only mutants it was all you know yeah there were other people as well and that's why she cared and yeah it's completely you know oh you marched against the Barthide. well 
terrorist, obviously, you know, because that's what they're they're charging Jace with terror. Yeah, char Jace is charging Reed with terrorism, and and they're they're grilling his mom. Yeah, that you know, accessory to terrorism or something is what they're they're getting at. It's just and and also, you know, again, it bring the the show brings up an actual, you know, civil rights thing with yeah, apartheid. Which was also specifically, you know, if you're born a certain way, you you know, they're going to make sure you have less rights. And, yeah, uh, Marcos points out, you know, there are exceptions to civil rights, which, you know, obviously is a huge problem. And, you know, yeah, he says, oh, they just got to say we're dangerous and suddenly we have less rights. And and then we get you know Marcos was abandoned by or yeah kicked out by his family, which again a lot of LGBTQ plus people sadly experience that, and now we also you know when when he you know in addition to to the stuff that Reed has literally done, I would argue that Marcos you know when when he's dealing with Reed is also like it's the frustration he has with his own family the yeah and very clever the, there's a there's a mutant projecting fear into the minds of people who come close to the that part of the the mutant underground that's a really good way to keep people away you know fear makes you turn and go in the other direction and and they only actually get past because marcos is like no 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 that's you know that's that's definitely fear mutant who's doing that, and you know he points out it's not usually this strong. There must be something wrong, and yeah, we we get to the part where there are a lot of portals inside and out, and you know people are, are running away, and you know you have that thing where you know Marcos is going to run in with with the meds and Kate points out you don't know the dose you know it could if you yeah if you give her too much you know I, I forget if she was it that it could kill her so, you know so obviously certainly something bad which again you know that is a, a thing that um, yeah if if you don't know yeah that absolutely is the the case any basically anything that can help the human body in in certain situations, if there's too much of it at, at once, and or it's given at the wrong time, yeah, it can hurt, even kill a human. And the human, that human. And let's see, yeah, you know, so Kate, yeah, goes in and, and actually gives the, the injection, and it actually, yeah, as was set up at the start of the episode that was exactly what was needed and yeah you know it really shows that Kate is willing to go above and beyond and yeah you know because at the end of the day the you know clearly Marcos was not aware otherwise he would have insisted that Kate go in she could, if she was completely cynical and, and heartless, she could have let Marcos go in, and then, you know, when the, the you know, if, if Marcos ended up giving the wrong dose, you know, she, yeah, maybe, you know, she just, has, she just has to say something that seems to absolve her, you know, yeah, and... The but but no, she risks her own safety, her own life to to save Blink. Even you know there is perhaps also the fact that Blink did help save her fam, her and her family, you know, and maybe that she hopes that Blink in the long term can help get Reed back. But nevertheless, you know, strong character moment and. So, yeah, after that, we, we, you know, Jay, Jace, you know, yeah, not very long after, he says, 
you give me the mutant underground, and I'll give you a law. I'll get you a lawyer. You know, and yeah, we wonder if he's going to be as strong of character as his wife is. And and you know, before that, yeah, Reed points out, I think you're the one who's in a world of hurt. You know, you're you you disappointed the the bosses. And this episode was directed by Len Wiseman. Very cool. Um, yeah, uh, he directed the, let's see, the yeah the first two Underworld movies, but also Live Free or Die Hard and Total Recall. And and yeah, you know the Underworld movies. Not the not the very best. I I honestly I enjoyed the I've watched the first three. I enjoyed them a lot. I thought there was a lot of really inspired elements to them but but yeah um, makes a lot of sense you know he's good with these kind of you know he this is the first time I've seen him handle mutants but you know mutants and then vampires and werewolves you know it's it's superpowers it's it's a world where superpowers exist and trying to make that feel real you know make, make that feel part of the real world because Underworld, as well as this show, you know, it's something very close, very closely resembling the the real world. You know, it's not Star Wars, for example, which, you know, a lot of amazing entries in that franchise, but it's absolutely not set in our world. And yeah, so some IMDb trivia for this episode: Dreamer is known in the comics as Beautiful Dreamer, a lead leader of the Morlock group with the power to affect people's memories through their dreams. That's also pretty cool. Um, she is played by Elena Satin, who was also on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. In the scene of the hospital, when Kate and Marcos are stealing the drugs, Clarice, the public address system, announces that Dr. Wiseman is needing the waiting room. Len Wiseman is one of the executive producers of the series and direct... That's right, he also executive produced the series and he directed this episode. And, yeah, Kobe Bell, Garrett Dillahunt, and Sharon Gless have appeared in Burn Notice, another show created by Matt Nix. That's right, I knew I recognized her. Yeah, Ellen Strucker is played by Sharon Gless. She played Madeline Western. West. I always get that name wrong. Weston. Madeline Weston on Burn Notice. So, yeah, very cool. And I... I really look forward to seeing more of Garrett Dillahunt. Uh, a huge fan of his. Um, yeah, you know the 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 forty four hundred, especially the uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name uh, Terminator: The Serial Chronicles. Yeah, that's right. Winter's Bone, The Road. Yeah, he's he's amazing. And he is really, really good on Burn Notice as well. And let's see. The the drug that is needed to suppress Blink's powers when they are out of control is called Hypercortisone D. This drug was featured in Grant Morrison's run on New X-Men, where it was also known as Kick. In the comics, it actually enhanced powers and aggression and was the concentrated form of the bacterial villain sublime. Wow. I love comics. Bacterial villain. And I think that is about. Let's see. Yeah. Um, I am. Yes, tomorrow. I will do another episode. So until then, all this damage, was it me? Is everyone okay? We were a little hard on the trees and some furniture, but people survived. This place needed a remodeling anyway. Maybe she could duct tape it back. <laughs>